Next speaker hitting yes. the stage is Maria Benito. Mm -hmm. Is uh, a re uh, research and development engineer in robotic automation. And yeah, Maria. Yeah, it's going to teach about us about how to build a planning a scene for move it by using the scene manager manager package. It's a package that Robotnik themselves they have created. Then by using this uh, this uh, scene that they have uh, built, then they will uh, she will uh, teach us how to do a pick and place manipulation application using move it and this is scene manager. So let's see if Maria is ready. Hello, Maria, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Perfectly. Okay, perfect. Great, so the audience is all yours. Okay, well, well, I have one issue because I can't see, I can't hear echo. Okay, so we are, you are now closing here. Yeah. Uh, you have to, yeah, you have to, it's because inside your project, you are having the video. Ah, okay. And then pause, you have to, you, you can minimize this yeah. actually, the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, so you are going to save a space, the minimize okay. button. Yeah, so all that space perfect. you can use it also later for whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, you can put you can push to the other side and then it will cover. Yeah, push it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. you can use it. Yeah. Are we set? Okay. Yes. Great. Perfect. Go for it. Okay. Well, first, I would like to, to start by thanking uh, both Robotnik and the Construct for giving me the opportunity to present this course. Uh, I also started learning robotics two years ago using the, the Construct uh, courses. So for me, it's a pleasure to be here today. And I hope that the, this presentation is useful for all of you here today. Okay, so now we can continue with the project. Okay, so just to put everyone into context, what we are going to learn today is how to easily build uh, the movie's planning scene using the scene manager, which is a custom package uh, developed by Robotnik. We are also going to learn how to interact with the movie's planning scene using this uh, package. And then we are going to put everything into practice by building a pick and place manipulation application using uh, both movie and the, the scene manager. For this course, uh, we are going to use the RB Kairos Plus uh, mobile robot, robot simulation. It is a four motor omnidirectional robot with, uh, from Robotnik, uh, which is equipped with a URE arm. The robot includes two 2D lidars to provide a 360 degrees coverage of the environment, two RGBD cameras, one in the front and one in the back, one IMU and a GPS for localization and navigation purposes. For this simulation, we are going to use uh, the RV Kairos with the UR5E arm uh, equipped with an on-robot vacuum gripper and an extra RGBD camera which is uh, attached uh, to the wrist. And this is a configuration that we uh, usually use uh, in Robotnik. Okay, so before starting with the presentation, I am going to give a brief uh, introduction about myself. My name is Maria Benito. I did my under, undergraduate degree in industrial engineering in Spain and then completed my master's degree in electrical engineering with a focus in automation and robotics at uh, Denmark. I then started working at Robotnik uh, for around two years now. I work at the research and development department where we mainly contribute to the development of European research projects. Inside Robotnik, I mainly uh, specialize in the development of manipulation applications uh, using Movit. Uh, some of these applications include uh, pick and place applications, teleoperation applications, unknown object grasping using deep learning algorithms, or uh, visual servoing applications. Okay, so now we can start with the with the ROSIF. Uh, in this ROSIF, we are going to use various ROS packages that are uh, all available in the ROS uh, distribution or are available in GitHub as source repositories, which are linked here. These are the main repositories that we will be using. Uh, we have the scene manager repositories, which are developed uh, by Robotnik. We also have the Movit uh, ROS repository and the component sorting repository, which is also developed by Robotnik and uh, basically includes the, the manipulation application that we will uh, develop uh, in this course so that you can check it out later on if you want to more information of how everything works. Okay, so first of all, 
we need to start by uh, installing some dependencies that are required to run the, the project. So to, in order to do this, we just need to open a, a new terminal. Okay. And we just need to copy these, the, these lines here. Okay, so we are uh, updating the ROS distribution uh, sources. We are now going to install some ROS open uh, distribution uh, packages that are needed to run the, the ROS project. Okay. Okay, then we are going to move to this uh, folder, which is inside the component sorting repository and basically includes the, the Debian binary packages, as you can see here. The binary packages of some uh, private uh, packages in Robotnik that are mainly used for navigation and localization. And we just need to, to install this binary so that we can we can uh, so that all of the programs inside uh, these packages are ready to, to be launched from, from this uh, machine. Okay. Okay, now we can move to the cutting workspace uh, where our whole project is compiled. And we just need to to remember that this uh, workspace needs to be sourced in order to run the, the commands that we will use in the in the project. In order to source the workspace, you just need to run uh, this command. Okay, so now we are ready to, to launch the simulation. To launch the simulation, we are going to use this launch file. Okay, and this may take uh, some time, but it will open uh, a window with the Gazebo simulation. Okay, so here we can see the simulation. Let me zoom out a bit. Okay, so here uh, we can see the RB Kairos and the, and the setup, uh, which consists of a workbench with some objects on, on top. And throughout the, the course, we will learn how to build a pick and place manipulation application to sort the boxes on the table uh, into the grids. Uh, you can also see that the, both the boxes and the workbench uh, have unique QR code identifiers. And this is important as we will use these uh, tags uh, to locate the objects in the, in the environment. Okay, so now we can uh, navigate towards the, the workbench. Uh, we're going to navigate to the workbench using the the QR code in the workbench and the front RGBD camera uh, installed in the robot uh, from which we can see that uh, QR. And then we are going to use the Robotnik uh, Locator node. This is a node that is uh, launched with the simulation and is able to, to locate, identify, and publish a TF frame for each uh, QR uh, code seen in the, in the image stream from the, from the camera. So if you open a uh, if you open Avid, you could check uh, that uh, the table QR frame is being uh, published. However, uh, we don't have time to do this right now, but this is something that you can check on your own. So now we will use the Robotnik uh, Docker node to perform docking to that uh, to the detected uh, workbench frame. And we just need to publish a, a goal to the Docker action server. In order to do that, we can use this command here.
Okay, and this will uh, open uh... a okay, moment. Okay, then we have to open the graphical uh, window and this will open a, an action client a user interface from which we can send the, the goal. Okay, so we just need to we just need to to fill in the doc frame, which is the detected table docking, and the robot doc frame, which is the uh, frame located in the, the robot. It's the name is robot base docking contact. Okay, and then the Docker node will internally use like a PID type controller to reduce the difference between these two frames. And we can see that the, the robot uh, is a frame, is approximating the table frame. And we, if we open Gaseo, we can also see how the robot moves towards the workbench. Okay, so now that we are uh, located in the workbench, we can continue. Okay, so I'm going to give a brief introduction to, to Movit. So what is Movit? Uh, Movit is an open source robotics manipulation platform composed of a set of packages and tools that allows the user to develop complex manipulation applications using ROS. It allows the user to perform motion planning, which is to plan the necessary trajectories to move uh, the robot arm or the robot arm M defector to a desired place. An advantage of Movit is that it performs both self-collision and external collision avoidance. And that also includes an RBIT uh, plugin from, the, from which the user can easily set, plan, and execute uh, motion plans uh, towards the desired uh, goal position. We will see this in, in a bit. OK, so what is the planning scene? The planning scene is a snapshot of the, of the world that includes both the robot state which includes the updated state of the, of the joints in the robot and the collision objects that are present in the environment. So in Movit, in Movit, the environment can be modeled using collision objects that can be seen here in green or Octomap that we can see here in, in purple. Collision objects are a geometric shapes that are manually spawned into the planning scene at a given position. While on the other hand, uh, the Octomap is composed of uh, dynamic voxels uh, that are continuously updated. And these voxels are filled uh, in based on the 3D point cloud input of any RGBD camera. Uh, in this case, we are using the input from the, from the ARM RGBD camera. So the planning scene is uh, used by Movit to perform collision checking uh, during path planning. So of course, it's important to have a, an accurate representation of the robot's environment in order to, to plan and move uh, while avoiding collisions. So currently, uh, the planning scene can be created in, in Movit uh, in various ways. You can do it using the, the Movit Arbit plugin, where you can create and spawn uh, collision objects one at a time. We will see this uh, in, a, in a second. And, or you can do, uh, fill in the Movit Collision Object message that can be seen here and publish it into, into a required ROS topic and it will be processed by the Move Group node. Or fill in the Movit Collision Object uh, message and use the planning scene uh, interface class, which is available both, both in C and Python, and is a ROS wrapper to the Move Group node. Um, the drawbacks of the methods that are um, currently available in Movit to create the planning scene is that uh, the Movit collision message is quite complex to fill in as it, as it has uh, lots of parameters and therefore makes it uh, difficult to add several collision objects because if you are, for example, using the Arbit plugin, you have to add uh, one object at a time 
And if you are using the the a custom node and the privacy interface, uh, you have to manually fill in each of the, uh, the messages. And also, if you are using the a node and the privacy interface, you are most likely uh, hard coding object information, which cannot be changed after compilation or uh, during runtime. Also, another disadvantage of uh, relying on the Arbit plugin is that you, you need to have a, a screen available. And this is something that you may not have, have access to if, for example, you are connecting to the robot via SSH or something like this. OK, so now we are going to uh, launch uh, the movie node and check some of the things that we have discussed before. Uh, so to use Movit uh, with your robot, uh, you should generate a Movit package using the Movit setup assistant. Uh, for this course, uh, we are going to assume that you already have a working Movit package for your robot with all of the configuration and launch files that are needed to run the Move Groups node. In our case, for this uh, robot, uh, the Move Group node can be launched using this uh, command here. OK, so this launch file will also open a, a window with Arbit, uh, which includes the Arbit uh, motion, Movit Motion Planning uh, plugin. Let's wait for it to open. Okay. Let's wait for the robot uh, to appear. Okay. So here we've got the motion plugin, uh, the motion planning plugin for Arbit, from which we can execute uh, uh, trajectories. We can, for example, send the robot to. We can, for example, uh, send the robot to predefined trajectories that are uh, stored in a YAML file in the Movit uh, in the Movit packages. OK, so to plan the trajectory. And then we can execute that trajectory. And the robot should also be moving in the Gazebo simulation. OK. In order to add uh, objects to the scene using Arbit, we have to move to the scene objects tab. And here we can add uh, objects by one by one. By one. We can choose uh, different shapes. We can add, add them using the, this bottom, and then we can uh, fill in the position, which is always with respect to the base uh, position. OK, we're going to remove it for now. OK, so if, uh, if we are using Arbit, we need to add all of the objects uh, one by one. OK, so now I'm going to talk about the scene manager package uh, developed by, by Robotnik. 
Uh, so what is the, the SIM manager? It's a custom uh, robotic ROS package uh, developed to help the user build and interact with the Movit's planning scene. It is a C++ class which inhabits from the Movit planning scene interface class. So all of the methods in this class can still be called from the SIM manager. Uh, one thing that I have to note here that it's important is that to use the SIM manager, uh, the user needs to have a Movit inst installed from source uh, in the Cat King workspace that you are uh, using. You can do it uh, following this link. And um, the SIM manager provides uh, various advantages. Uh, for example, a collision objects can be easily defined in a YAML file, which can be modified after compilation at any time. It allows the user to easily add several objects to the planning scene. It adds new functionalities that allow the user to also interact with the planning scene. It also exposes row services for these uh, functionalities so that they can be called from any row node without the need to include uh, Mobit uh, libraries. And it also publishes a, a collision object information in RPID, like for example, the name of the objects and the frame of the objects to easily locate the objects on the, the objects on the screen. So to add the SIM manager to any uh, ROS project, you just need to add the SIM manager and SIM manager messages uh, packages to your Kakin workspace. You then also need to add the packages to the CMake list and the package XML files in the package where you are going to create the node that is going to use the SIM manager functionality. You also need to include the, include the SIM manager library in your manipulation application C++, C++ node using this line here. And then you just need to create a, an object of the SIM manager class which can be done uh, using these, these lines here. Okay, so as I said before, to create the planning scene uh, using the scene manager, you just need uh, to fill in a YAML file. The YAML file must include the objects parameter, which includes uh, all of the objects that are going to be processed by the scene manager. And for each object, we need to define uh, some parameters. We have the spawn uh, tag that if it's set to true, uh, the scene manager will spawn the object to the, to the planning scene during initialization. We have the static tag to identify those objects that are going to be static in the scene. This is important as some uh, scene manager functionalities only apply to static objects. Then we have the frame ID and the object pose, which is described in relation to, to this frame ID. And also here I have to note that the scene manager spawn, spawns the objects from the base of the object instead of, instead of the center of the object. And that way you don't need to think about the, the height of the, of the object in order to place it on top of a surface. You just need to, to, to uh, set the, the place you want it in the surface and, and that's everything. And then we have uh, the geometry tag, which can be a geometric uh, shape, like for example, a box here or also a mesh and you just have to, to pass the mesh uh, direction. And then uh, we have another interesting parameter, which is the, the layout parameter which is very useful uh, as it allows the user to build a uh, matrix-like structures uh, composed of several instances of the same object. So this is, for example, very useful is if you need to launch a, a palette with a stack of box, boxes on, on top, and that way you don't need to define each box uh, one by one. You just need to, to set the, the matrix distri distribution you want and all of the different boxes will be spawned in, in position. Okay, so the scene manager uh, adds new functionalities that allow the user to interact with the planning scene. So some of them are the init scene method, which uh, spawns all of the coll collision objects defining the YAML into the planning scene. 
then we have the add object and remove object uh, methods where you can add or remove a specific collision objects from the planning sheet and you just have to to enter the a, a string with the name of the object and that's it you don't need to fill in the whole message to remove the object then we have the attach and detach uh, objects to attach uh, the, an object to the end effector. We also have the move relative to a method that allows uh, the user to move the end effector relative to a collision object frame. Uh, we also have the modify object method to modify during runtime uh, the collision object position in the planning scene and the layout composition if you have a, a defined uh, a layout uh, and very easily. Then we also have the allow collision and restore collision uh, to allow collision between a desired object or link of the robot and other collision objects in the planning scene. And this is, for example, useful if you want to place an object on top of a surface and therefore you will allow a collision just uh, when you are going to place the object and then you can restore it again. So the, uh, another interesting thing is that the scene manager, as I said before, uh, exposes uh, services uh, for some of these uh, uh, methods. And this is uh, useful as it allows the user to interact with the blind scene from any node uh, in the network. And I find this very useful in projects where we have various robots which are managed from a central uh, task planner, for example, as you can interact with each of uh, the robots uh, planning scene from a unique uh, node. Okay, so uh, let's check how to, to use the, the scene manager by launching the manipulation demo node, which is a node, well, we can see it here. Let me launch it before. Okay, but it's launching. This is a node. Okay, so this node just uh, creates a scene manager object and uh, publishes the, all of the objects into the planning scene by using the init scene uh, method. And then we just have a, a spin here uh, so that we can keep calling all of the services from the scene manager. Okay. So we have now added the objects and here if you check Arbit, we, we can see that all of the objects have been added to the planning scene. Okay, so we are now going to try some functions in order to interact with the planning scene. For example, you can use uh, the, this command here to remove some of the objects in the, in the planning scene. Okay, so with this call, we are removing the table and one crate, for example. If we want to remove all of the objects in a planning scene, we have to set a, the all tag to true, and then we have to remove the objects from inside the, the vector. And that way we will remove all of the, of the objects in the planning scene. To add the objects again, we can uh, call the add objects. If we don't state uh, any object uh, and we have the this to true, we will uh, the scene manager will upload all of the static uh, objects in the to the planning scene. Okay, so for example, uh, the boxes are not added because uh, they are not uh, set as uh, static. But if we want to add the, the boxes, we just need to here call the box. 
this is uh, the box object is defined as a layout, so it will add various boxes at the same time. Here we can see that it has added box one, two, and three. Okay, so for example, if we want to modify the the box object. Okay, so we can, for example, change the layout. If I want to have now six, a stack of six boxes. Here we have to say that it's for the box object. Okay, so here we can see that it has added more, more boxes. And also, if we want to remove them of the, the boxes, we don't have to remove them all by one by one. We can just call the box because it includes all of them. And it will remove them. Okay. So for example, if we want to modify the position of a collision object, I am, for example, going to move the unbox with respect to to the create frame ID, which is a, we just have to put the, the name of the of the object that we want. It's the same name as the frame ID. Here I can put the relative position with respect to that object. And it will, for example, move the box uh, six with uh, respect to the grade two. Okay. So here we can see all of the different services. Um, but some of them I will show them uh, later on. I am now going to remove all of the objects from the planning scene to prepare it for the next uh, demo. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to see how to build a pick and place application uh, using Mobit and the SIM manager package. Uh, the ROS node uh, that we are going to use will be developed using the, the SIM manager, the Mobit group interse interface, with, which is the, the Mobit uh, ROS wrapper uh, C class to. It's a wrapper to the move group node uh, from Movit. We are also going to use the action lib, simple action server, to create a, a server uh, for the two actions that we are going to create. We are going to use the uh, this uh, public, public repository, uh, the Gazebo ROS link attacher, so that we can grab the objects uh, in Gazebo as well. And then we are also going to use the Robotnik locator uh, packets that we ha uh, described before to, to locate the boxes uh, QR codes. Okay, so the node is going to have two actions. The pick object action, which measures it's just uh, the object name that we want to pick and it's going to be a, a string. So here we can see the pick object action uh, procedure. We are going to first uh, move the arm to 
to a position in the table from which it can see the whole uh, setup from the camera. Uh, this position, uh, to move to this position, we are going to use the move group uh, interface. Uh, and we have uh, the position predefined uh, in the SRDF file uh, from Mobit. And this, uh, to, to move, we're going to plan to that position and then execute to the position. Then we are going to add, add the collision object uh, of, the, of the object that we want to, to pick uh, to the planning scene. Uh, so we just need to use the scene manager, uh, add objects uh, method, and this input is the uh, input, which is the object uh, string name that we want to, to pick. For this uh, application, the boxes, uh, we, we will have a, a box uh, object defined uh, and it's one of the boxes, uh, its position is uh, defined relative to its own unique uh, QR code. So when we add each box, it will be added to the updated uh, position of the, with respect to the QR code that is being published by the Robotnik uh, locator. Then we are going to use the move relative uh, method from the scene manager to move relative uh, to that a spawn a object, a spawn box. Um, so we are we are just going to move. A, we are just going to stay at a at a distance a, from that object, and we need to put the orientation because the collision. A, the, the box that we're trying to pick uh, its frame doesn't have the same orientation as we want in the defector. Let me launch first the, the application so that we can see the objects in the scene and it will be easy, easier to, to see. Okay, so the box objects have this orientation and we have to, to put the, uh, the relative orientation we want uh, in the end effector. Okay, and then we are going to move uh, downwards, uh, also relative to the object that we want to pick. Then we are use the, going to use the attach object method from the scene manager to attach the object to the end effector. And we're also going to, uh, to use the attach, um, the Gazebo link atta attacher service, uh, which will uh, attach the object in Gazebo also. Five minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, then we are going to, um, we are also going to allow the collision uh, between the attached uh, box and the possible uh, collision objects uh, that are underneath that box. Because for example, if we try to pick this box, uh, underneath we have the other ones and uh, move it won't allow us to move uh, upwards. So we are going to remove the, the collision checking between this box and the one underneath. And this can be uh, done by a uh, using uh, this method from the planning scene interface, uh, which searches for objects uh, in a certain area. And then we are, uh, once we, we allow the collision, we are going to move uh, up again uh, with the respect to the picked box, and we will restore the collision. And then we have the place uh, object uh, action, which have to, 
which has two parameters, which are both strings. It's the, the first one is the object uh, that we want to place and in which surface we want to place it, which will be the grade one or grade two, depending on what uh, we want. And here we can see the place procedure, which is uh, similar. We are first going to uh, move relative to the uh, surface that we want to place the object in. So, for example, we're going to move relative to the grade one or to the grade two so that we can position then the vector on top. Uh, then we are going to perform a Cartesian movement uh, downwards. And the good, thing about, the good thing about the Cartesian movement is that when you uh, perform the plan, you don't need uh, the plan to be 100% successful in order to uh, execute it. So, for example, if the, uh, you can only perform a, a percentage of that plan, you are going to perform it. So, we are going to perform the Cartesian plan downwards until the collision, until the object that we have attached uh, touches the the grade that we want to place it in. Okay. And then we are just going to detach uh, the box uh, using the scene manager detach uh, box uh, method. And then we will uh, move back, uh, upwards relative to the to the grade that we want to to place uh, the object that we have placed the object in. So for example, to run the application, we have already launched the, the application. And to run the different uh, actions. Okay. So, for example, we are going to pick box three, as we can see that it's the top one. And they are now it's moving towards the look position. This now the camera will now detect the QR code and we are going to add this object again at the correct uh, updated position. We can also here, see here in Casivo. Okay, so now we are moving relative to the object. We are then going to attach the object and then move back relative also to that object. Okay, so we can see that the action has succeeded, and when, then we just we can place this object in the grade that we want. For example, grade one. So first, we are going to move relative to that uh, to the grade one, which is this one here, and we are going to place then the vector on top of it, and then we are going to perform the Cartesian motion until a uh, move it uh, allows it because there's a collision there. Then we are going to detach the object and move back up. Okay. So for example, let me see if I can zoom in. Okay. Okay, I'm going to try to move this a little bit just to see how we are updating the, the collision object with its correct position.
Okay, so now we are going to try and pick the box two. So the arm will move back to the look position. And we are, we are going to add the object to the updated Let me see. I don't know why it has not updated the, the position. Okay, but we can place it in in the crate. Hi, um, could it be that Maria maybe uh, where you when you uh, were moving the, the box, maybe um, you didn't quite click on it, and then Gazebo, when you made the recognition, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Yes, because it should. I have tried this before, and it should I think correct the, the position. Yeah, I think so. Because they were like the, the rings, the color rings still. Ah, uh, okay. Recognize. Maybe. Yes, maybe it's that. Okay. But yes, uh, this is basically everything. You, we ca you can move uh, boxes from one place to, to the other. And yes, that's, that's the, the application. Okay, okay. So thank you, Maria. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you very much. Great <laughs> presentation. I'm making this work. Not easy, not easy. It's <laughs> a lot of work. Yes. Hmm. Okay, that so I, I recommend the, uh, everyone that wants to try this to try moving from one place to another and try again the turning the, the object because it, yeah, it, it is supposed to work. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think that the point of Miguel yeah, is I a good one is because Gazebo no. doesn't update the data until you click on the button. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then, mm -hmm. this, even if we can see in Gazebo that is at that position, for mm -hmm. the real yes. programs, it's still in the old position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to yes. be sure about that. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, okay. So try <laughs> it. Try everyone. So uh, if you have questions, uh, as always, post them in the Q and A section. Ask the speaker. And also vote for the questions that you like the most. Yeah, and in the meantime, uh, let me the, the people start posting questions on the, the chat. Mm -hmm. On the ask the speaker panel. Let me ask you one question. Yes. And then the, the question is: um, When do you do, do we have to use the Octomap in MoveIt, or when do we have to use the collision objects? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, so this is a, an interesting question. Uh, I would say that it depends on, on the environment that you have. So, for example, for a static em environments, like, for example, industrial uh, environments and with industrial applications where the, the space is, is bounded and the surrounding is, is controlled, I would uh, just use uh, collision objects because the, the Octomap, Although being very useful, it also takes up a lot of uh, CPU usage, uh, making everything a little bit slower. Mm. So for th those environments, I would suggest uh, just using collision objects. But for example, for uh, human-robot collaborative uh, environments or dynamic environments, I would suggest using the Octomap and uh, collision objects uh, as well. I think it is be, uh, better to use uh, collision objects um, for static objects uh, that you for sure uh, know that are in the scene and you know the position of, because uh, the automat takes some time to, to update the, the environment, both when adding and when removing uh, voxels. So if you, if you don't use collision objects, the planning scene uh, may start to fill in uh, with noise from voxels that uh, are not uh, removed uh, properly from the scene. And this can be prevented by adding collision objects to the scene. 
as uh, boxes are not placed on top of those objects. So if you know the position of some objects or if you want to interact with objects in the environment, uh, you should uh, add them add them to the scene. Oh, it's interesting what you mentioned about the those boxes that still are there, but mm. in reality, they don't have any object there, right? Right? It's yes. an error. So that yeah, it's looks, an error. It like, mm. looks like in the navigation packages. So this happens also. You know the mm. cost maps? Do you know about mm -hmm. the cost maps? The yes. cost maps represent the dynamic objects. Well, one of the cost maps is the dynamic objects that appear around the robot, like people moving around. But sometimes mm -hmm. there are so many obstacles there that the cost map gets populated with obstacles that they don't exist anymore because the person has already moved. Then navigation, what it does is activates one system that clears all and it starts new from zero. Yes, uh, here in, in the Octomap, we also have a, a system to clear the Octomap, but the thing mm -hmm. is that uh, you don't clear the whole Octomap. You, also, you only clear the areas uh, where you are uh, looking in that moment. At that uh, moment. Uh -huh. Yes, because it uses like uh, some ray tracing uh, to remove the object. So if you are not seeing something behind, so meaning that it's empty in front, it won't remove it. So sometimes you just uh, keep adding uh, voxels that are that add to the scene no. that shouldn't be there. Okay. And if you if you uh, model the, the the static part of the scene using uh, collision objects, you are never going to add their uh, voxels. So you, you at least make sure that you have less uh, noise. Okay. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. So mm -hmm. let me ask you a question from Alberto Esquerro. Uh, the question is: Are there any plans to port the scene manager? package to ROS2? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, we, I have been looking into Mobit2 because I think that it, it has lots of uh, new functionalities that are really uh, useful. Like you, they support multiple robots, they have real-time applications, mm -hmm. like time-optimal trajectory filtering also. So this is, uh, of course, something that we in Robotnik want to do. We are also trying to migrate everything in Robotnik to ROS2. Mm -hmm. So, of course, also uh, move it. So, yes, this is, uh, of course, something that uh, we want to do and that we are going to start doing. In the near future, yeah. Yeah. Great, great. And then another question from Rodrigo González. Um, he asks... Does this move it setup include perception? And if not, can it be included in the scene manager? Uh, no, the scene manager does not include perception because it's only uh, used like for predefined uh, objects. But of course, it can be used together with the perception pipeline that already Mobit has. Uh, Mobit already allows the user to configure the the perception use, uh, which is the the Octomap, and it can be configured with the uh, you can use it with the a depth map from an RGBD camera or, or with a point cloud. So these both things can be used uh, together. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. So we have any more questions? No more questions no? and no more time. Also. Okay. And <laughs> perfect. Perfect. So thanks a lot, Maria. Thank you. Very much. Oh, thank you all. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. See ya. So now remember that it's going to appear on the screen the panel to vote for, to rate the speech of Maria. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's time that we do what? What Sm smells? Smells what? Smells coffee. It smells. Smells Starbucks. Starbucks. Yes. Yeah. Do you think we'll get some uh, those donuts that have sprinkles? Pink sprinkles on yes. it, maybe? Yes. If we go fast? Yes, let's yeah. go there. We are going to fight for that. We need them. Yeah, uh, we need them for sure. <laughs> we need them. So okay, see you in... Uh, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Yeah. Wait, so you have now the... You should have also now the Rorschach yeah. button. After you click on rating, then it should mm -hmm. appear there. Then click on the Rorschach for the next uh, speaker. And then let's do uh, one, one stop, one coffee break. Yeah. 20 so minutes. 20 minutes, some coffee, and we're back. And we're back for the last part of the conference, which is going to be the last two speakers and then the Ross Awards. Mm -hmm.